Throughout human history, there has always been people that scammed one another. But there is a scammer in history that's known as the most famous scammer in the whole world. His scam is so famous that his last name became an icon in the scamming world. Today's video is about this man, Charles Ponzi. On March 3rd, 1882, Charles Ponzi was born in Luga, Italy. Unlike other Italians, Ponzi's family was very rich and you could say they were well off. So from an early age, Charles had a very easy childhood until he gets to the age of 15 when his father dies and all his money goes to his son. His mother had a plan for him to go to college and get a good degree. But Charles Ponzi said, F that, I'm not going to college. He took all the money and went partying with it, going to fancy restaurants and anything you name it, he wasted all his money on. It got to a point where after a few years, all the money that his father had left him was completely gone. After years of messing around and using up all the money he had, he asked his uncle, what should I do? I don't have any more money left. His uncle tells him that he should come work for him because he has a job available. Charles Ponzi laughs in his face and says, no, I'm not going to do hard labor for barely any pay. I'll go figure out some other way to make money. The time is the beginning of the 20th century and a lot of Italians are migrating to the east coast of the United States. Charles Ponzi figures it out. He says, I will go to America and make it there. In the year 1903, Charles gets to Boston, Massachusetts with the help of a ship. After getting off the ship and looking around the city, he makes a promise to himself. He says, I will not go back to Italy unless I get rich. But there was a huge obstacle in the way, and that was figuring out how to make money. Because he had no clue what he's gonna do. He didn't even speak English properly. But something important is that he had passion, and he was only 21 years old, so he was completely motivated in doing what he wanted. He didn't have very much money. After a few days, he started running out and he realized that the US is not as easy as it sounds. It's basically like Italy, you have to work to pay your bills and there is no get rich quick scheme anywhere. At first, he goes to a restaurant and decides to become a waiter. Then they make him a dishwasher and he quits and gets another job and then another job. And he goes up and down the United States Eventually, he makes it all the way down to Florida. So basically, he had experience getting a job in every single state on the east coast of the United States. He continued working and every time he got paid, he didn't do anything special with the money. He went out and celebrated. He went to restaurants, he went to shows or casinos and basically blew it all and went back to work to get more. Even though he was broke, he would wear luxurious clothes to these parties just to stand out. He went all the way to Florida and realized there's nothing here. So he decided to change countries. He decided to go to Montreal, Canada to see if things work better for him. When he gets to Montreal, he gets a job as a bank clerk in an Italian bank that's located in Canada. But the people that had accounts there were Italian immigrants. The bank's name was Banco Zarossi and he was a con man that owned the bank. So he was always stealing money from his customers. He was basically promising all the customers 6% interest rates, which was double the competitors. Basically, he was getting money from new investors and giving them to the old one. And this was a never ending cycle. But if someone didn't invest, this is when stuff would hit the fan. After a few months of working here, Ponzi gets familiar with the scam his boss is pulling. And all of a sudden, when the situation got fishy, his boss packed up his suitcase full of cash and ran away. Since the feds had not gotten there yet, Ponzi decided to start scamming right away. He took a blank check from one of the business that had an account there and wrote a blank check for himself. He makes the check out for $423.58. He chose that number to not stand out and make it seem legit. But it seems like they were smarter than Charles Ponzi himself. After trying to deposit this check, the bank called the police and said they have a fraudulent check. 
and the Canadian police arrests him. After going to trial, Charles Ponzi gets three years in prison. Charles Ponzi just began learning scamming from his boss in the bank he was working at. But once he went to prison, he started learning scamming a lot better. You could say he graduated with a master's in scamming. After three years, he gets released from prison. But before he goes back to the United States, he has another way of making money. He finds four Italian immigrants that are trying to get into the United States. He tells them, give me this amount of money and I will take you across the border. The four Italians thought he was legit, so they paid him the money and they just walk straight to the borders. And after realizing this dude is trying to smuggle these four, they arrested him once again. Once again, Charles gets two years in prison for trying to do this. After finally being released from prison, Ponzi gets back to Boston and gets another job. He gets a job at a company named JR Pool Company, which dealt with import and exports. His new job wasn't treating him too badly. He also met a girl that he fell in love with and ended up marrying. Charles Ponzi was truly in love. He would tell her that he will buy her everything expensive and he would shower her with diamonds. Even though his new wife didn't want any of that, he said, no, you don't understand. I will get you everything you ever wanted. But after getting married, he realized that his dead end job is not going to pay for anything nice. So he decided to quit to figure something else out. After researching here and there, he realized that there are a lot of magazines around the world that charge a whole lot of money for advertisements. So he decided to create his own magazine and offer advertisements to different companies and make money this way. He basically makes a brand new magazine and starts writing letters to different companies all around the world. He was basically offering cheaper advertisement in his brand new magazine and he was making it sound hot. But it seems like none of these companies were interested in something like this. And you could say Charles Ponzi's magazine was a failure. After a few months passes and Charles Ponzi was trying to figure out different things, he gets a letter from Spain and it's from a Spanish company that's interested in advertising in his brand new magazine. And he remembered that he sent some letters to European businesses as well, but he never expected for a European company to answer. In the letter the Spanish company had sent, this was the coupon that came along with it. This coupon is an international reply coupon or the IRC. It was basically a coupon that was sent through international mail when you didn't expect the person that's returning mail to pay for it. So you would just send this coupon just in case. Charles Ponzi didn't know this, but this IRC coupon was going to change his life forever. And it was also going to change the scamming world forever. When Charles Ponzi was thinking about this coupon, he realized that in different countries, the cost of this coupon is much lower and much higher. Like for example, in the country of Italy, because of World War I, the cost of this coupon is much lower than the US. So he thought to himself, he would import these coupons from Italy and sell them in the US. Easy peasy money, right? In the year 1920, Charles Ponzi changes his office name to a new business, Securities Exchange Company. He very quickly realized that these coupons don't make a whole lot of money. There's not that many around and there's not enough buyers for it to make any real money. But he still believed in the product and he knew he could make a lot of money with this method. After thinking for a few weeks, he got the bright idea. A bright idea that's very famous throughout the world. An idea that's referred to as the Ponzi scheme. A Ponzi scheme is basically convincing new investors to keep investing in his company. And you will double your money in three months. And if the new investors don't keep pumping in, that's when the pyramid collapses. But still, there is no money to be made. It's basically the higher ups and of course the head of everything, Charles Ponzi himself making all the cash. So it was important for Charles Ponzi to keep this method hot so new investors would keep pumping in so the pyramid doesn't collapse. Ponzi knew what he was doing. He wasn't looking for the rich banker or the rich investor that actually reads what he's investing in. He was looking for people just like himself, the people that are looking for get rich quick schemes all around the world. So he would convince these people 
that invest money and throw money at everything without thinking. And also, Charles knew that he wasn't a brilliant financer and he knows what he's doing. He knew one thing though. He knew he can convince people with his words because he was very charismatic. Charles Ponzi's scheme started with only 18 people. But it grew so exponentially that in just a few months, he was bringing in $250,000 a day to his company. The time is in the early 1920s and bringing 250 k a day is insane. Day by day, Charles Ponzi would get more and more famous because he was getting well known around the city, even around the country. The Boston Post would write about him that Charles Ponzi is a brilliant businessman and this caused even a larger traffic to line up behind his scheme. Ponzi finally got to a point where he could satisfy his own life and his wife and he got that luxurious life he always wanted. But living like a king didn't last too long for Charles Ponzi. The same Boston newspapers that would call him a brilliant financer called him out and told him he's a con artist. The newspapers would also add, if you want to make $250,000 and buy coupons with it, you're gonna need about 160 million of them. But the problem is there's only 27,000 coupons in circulation around the world. So that's why Charles Ponzi is a con artist. Charles Ponzi had stole millions of dollars from the people of the world and the Boston police eventually arrested him. But Charles had a lot of money, so he hired a good lawyer to help him out. And that's why he only got five years in prison, even though he stole millions of dollars from tens of thousands of people. And because he had good behavior in prison, they released him in three and a half years. As soon as Charles got out of prison, he started another scheme. But when the police in the US usually let go of a man like this, they watch out from afar to see what he's gonna be up to after he gets out. And that's why before even his Ponzi scheme that he had been planning for years started, they arrested him. But this time, since he was his second offense, they gave him seven years in prison. After doing seven years in state prison, Charles Ponzi was told that you're no longer welcome in America and they had to deport him. This was the worst time of Charles Ponzi's life because he hated being in Italy and he was super depressed and demotivated, which is why he moved to Brazil to start another scheme so he can get rich quick again. While all this is happening, his wife is still in the US because she didn't want to come with him. But in the year 1941, after barely being in Brazil, Charles Ponzi suffers a heart attack and goes blind in one eye. And seven years later, in the year 1948, he suffers a stroke that paralyzes him from the neck down and after a few months, he dies in the hospital. But even with all that, Charles Ponzi's name is still known as the most famous scammer that scammed the world.